Good morning. Good morning, Freeman. Good afternoon, David. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, David and Debbie. We shall see who is joining today. <laughs> Actually, we just see the topics proposed by E and uh, me. Yeah. yeah if you see the agenda items, uh, the last one is added by me to confirm with uh, uh, Samuel to create a user story of causes support in the roadmap repo. Morning, Shui. Uh, morning. Let me send a reminder in our Slack channel. It will. Hello, Minion. Hello, Minion. Do you know if uh, Samir is going to be joining us today or no? Uh, I thought you would. I'm thinking it right now, too. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, it's joining. I see. Hello, Sachi. Hello. Hey, Sachi. How are you? Well, uh, I think we got quorum. Could probably get started. Uh, oh, well, it looks like Samir came and then dropped. So maybe give him a second. Hey, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Hey, Sorry about that, some audio issues. I think it's all fixed. Um, let's go one by one on the agenda. Is, is somebody being the chair today? Who wants to be the chair today? And drive the agenda. I'm happy to do it. I can, yeah, I can. I can get us going. I mean, we have we have an agenda item up there. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, let's go for so, Yeah. So, um, update of the cozy spec. Uh, Shiwe is yours. I saw that we have some DCO um, errors, but is there something you wanted to talk about more specifically about it? Uh, yes, uh, the, uh, the DCO check is failed, uh, but it's not caused by me uh, because the commit in the original branch uh, has no DCO, uh, so it's failing. Um, I can fix it, but I need to squash everything. Uh, which whose commit is that? Uh, as I, uh, as you can see, I have comments in the uh, reply. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Pratesh is one of one of the people, um, and then we have uh, Sajay. You have one commit in there, so both of you are on the call, and then the only other one would be uh, Kim who's not here right now, but we can try and reach out to him separately. Was there any anything else blocking this? Because I didn't see any actual approvals on this. All right, that would be the next the next step once we get past the DCO. So it will take a bit to get to this 
specific PR. I have been looking at the COSI security report uh, updated on I think Thursday or Friday that I got the first report. The second was posted last week. Um, I'm also on call last week and this week. So my general involvement in PRs has been low. I've only looked at pretty small PRs. Uh, but this is on my radar. I need to review this PR. So, uh, Sajay, Pratesh, uh, do you know what you need to do to resolve at least the DCOs so we can get past that? Yeah, I don't know usually... what to do here. Yeah, this, this is yeah. a mismatch between the email address which I'm using for GitHub account and the email address which I'm using for sign off. Yeah, so if you click on if you click uh, if you click on the actual details of it, um, it the nice thing is it actually tells you the the right like the command you need to execute um, to fix the problem. So if you you have to end up um, rebasing and of course make sure that your uh, your username and email address is correct after you rebase and push. Um, and then that way it'll fix the errors. If you just you just have to click on the the DCO details and they'll tell you how to how to do that. Yeah, I think I will need to publish new PR for that because it's in mainline. Okay, I will take a look. Oh yeah, so I see because she waits your. Uh, Oh, it's from a different branch to the cozy envelope branch. So this isn't even a main pull to main. Okay. Um, so Do how we... about I just uh, squash everything and try to merge? Yeah, I think that'll go faster because it's not to main. So it's less less of a, I guess less of a concern since we're just merging into the cozy envelope, right? Yes. Yeah, let's just, yeah. And then you can do a separate PR for merge to me, right? Yeah. Okay. So okay. let me just do it right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So we got that one covered. Um, we have so the three. Somebody, I'm not sure who put the three open issues in '93. This is one. Uh, appreciate like a double check, but this is the one where Samir and I went through it. Um, and. Yeah, yeah, let so, me jump in. I think I put the remaining three items in there. Uh, so, or the remaining items after the first items in there. So on the issue 93, I uh, looked which files were affected and I thought the files which are affected have been deprecated. But uh, Pritesh corrected me that issue may be present in other parts of the code as well. So I'm going to create a generic issue but, and then somebody has to do a code search to see where all that issue may be present. So the three issues you asked me to create, uh, before creating them, I went to look where was the, the where were those three issues re reported? And like I said, they were reported in a file, which I believe you no longer use. Okay. But then British corrected me a few minutes ago saying, well, those issues may be present elsewhere in the code. And I did a grep or a search and I found them elsewhere in the code still. So those issues are present. I'll just create issues to track them. Um, and then somebody has to go and fix them in the code later. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And then we can then we can close that issue out after after those are, yeah. are yeah. created. So I'll so. Get up later. Uh, the okay. next one also by me. I saw some updates by CodeGov. I don't know what that bot does. So I just was curious about it. If somebody can tell me what the code curve bot does. I, I didn't see it initially. Now I just see it show up in some check-ins. Yeah, so uh, the code curve is to report the code coverage. So uh, once you uh, open a PI, it will uh, tell you how the code coverage changes. Is going to have more code covered or less code covered? It will report to you a percentage. And you can see history. So as you more and more PRs open and merge, you can see the trend of the code coverage. What does this code coverage mean? That that what percentage of code has been 2P reviewed or 2% reviewed? Uh, 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 that's unit test. 
So how many code are unit tested? Oh, how many code are unit tested? That's what the code curve does. Okay. Yes. Okay. And did we recently turn it on? Because I don't remember seeing it till about two weeks ago or one week ago. I don't remember seeing it earlier. Just curious. So that that's 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 a good thing, right? This code coverage. So so when if I'm looking at it or somebody is looking at it, is there an action to take there? What do we do when we see this report? Like what action to take? Uh, I think we can discuss it later for the target uh, color coverage rate. Uh, yeah, so currently uh, our code coverage is pretty low. <laughs> yeah, so uh, for example, for the Go Cozy library, uh, we are targeting for 89%. Uh, uh, I think for the uh, notation core goal, uh, we need a higher bar because it's about the crypto library. Uh, for notation goal, we also need a, a pretty high, like uh, at least I think we should have like 75 or 80 uh, percent code coverage. In, that's ensured that we have covered all the cases. But we need to discuss about the rate. Okay, yeah, I think this yeah. is beyond the, the, the detail I can can say is a good or bad, maybe. Uh, yeah. British, or Amelian can jump in if they have any thoughts on this. This helps me understand what it is. Okay. No, this yes, is I mean, generally, generally a good, a, a good best practice is to start with a baseline. So if you're at, let's just say hypothetically 20% code coverage and then just and, and forcing a 20% or higher, um, that way you don't go down in code coverage. Um, and so that way people, when they submit new code, it doesn't you know, they, they're going to basically have to create unit tests for the new code they add. Okay. Yeah, overall, this is great. I mean, this is pretty much required for um, security sensitive libraries, even like organizations have code coverage, code review tools. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think I didn't track on which repositories currently we have this enabled? If somebody can tell me that. I saw some updates on like adding badges and stuff. I I didn't go through all the PRs though. So. The PRs are for almost all three uh, packages, not go, go, go and notation base. Okay. Okay, uh, I think my query is answered. No. Uh, yeah. the next so for the uh, code coverage and the badges, I have added them um, uh, to uh, notation CI, uh, notation go, and notation code go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, by the way, uh, notation v1 also has uh, code coverage, uh, and uh, actually their uh, code coverage is pretty high. All right. Yeah, I think we'll yeah we'll get into a discussion of what to what target once we have everything set up. Uh, what targets we should have. So so would everybody everybody be in support of just enforcing whatever the current code coverage percentage is uh, on PR, like so that way we make sure we add unit tests as we move forward. I think that sounds reasonable. I, yeah, like, I haven't looked at like what what do those percentages look like right now? I think they are somewhere in sixties or seventies. So we are good. Okay. Uh, like I mean, yeah, the start of sixties and seventies is fine. But right. we, once we go near nineties, we might have to do thing. But yeah, for time being, we are good. Okay. Okay. Um, so the pro you're requesting more details on projects for you. I'm guessing that was you, Samir, as well. Yeah, I was just okay. uh, looking at the project and I noticed this timeline view, which you and I hadn't talked about. So, if, and I and I tried to see how to assign things to sprint, or I didn't understand it fully. If uh, somebody can help me understand this timeline view, I don't understand the timeline view, how to set it up, and what is the purpose of it. Okay, uh, I can explain it. And uh, let me share my screen. Just a moment. OK. 
Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, uh, this is the timeline. Uh, this board is actually, it was created by me. Uh, the intention is that we can uh, visualize the milestone with uh, the planned time timeline and also uh, the user story level or feature level uh, issues. So uh, the intention is that we, we list uh, uh, the issue from the roadmap repo, as I showed here, this uh, roadmap uh, 38, this issue is actually a newly created uh, user story. So ideally all the, all the issue uh, in the uh, roadmap repo should be the user story feature level, end-to-end -end level this kind of uh, type of issue that we list here, it will be easy to show that uh, what we are going to deliver from uh, from a customer point of view in, in which milestone and also the planned uh, timeline. So this okay. is the- I think it was just a, I think this was yeah. just a, just a mock-up, just a, just a rough idea. I don't, we, you know, we haven't like flushed this out. So it was just, Yes, an idea yes. Of, yeah, right. of what it could be like. Of course, the dates aren't really right either. So, um, but yeah, I think that that's all that really was. So, uh, how do you like that's that's fine if this is just a book up, but how do you assign dates any which way? I, I couldn't figure out how to tag a issue or pull request into into to show up here and in the right swim lane. Uh, actually, you see here the milestone is actually the milestone uh, assigned for for each uh, issue. Let me switch to another one. So you see this uh, uh, all table. So the milestone is actually the milestone we assigned to to the to each issues or PRs. There's no nothing uh, has been done uh, on the timeline uh, board, uh, but there is a timeline. This column. Ah. This is a newly created field. So, so you, you can assign the issue. Uh, of course, it's under a certain milestone to, to this one. So yeah, there's different yeah, there's different, the, yeah. There's yeah, there's different ways to do this. I, I think, I mean, I I think we should, because this is the kind of the technical meeting, I think we should like kind of table this for now. And okay. circle back. There are some other ways we could do this other than adding yet another tag because you can also assign a date to the milestone itself. Um, so I, I think let's let's close out on this and we can uh, PMs can circle back on kind of playing around with this a little more. Is that okay? That's fine, good. So David, are you saying you'll circle back with you on this one and then on we can discuss we can close this view on Thursday? Yeah, I think let's 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 punt this to Thursday Thursday discussion if we want, and and maybe we could um, on Slack we could we could kind of discuss some other ideas for this one. I don't think we need to to lock on this right now. Okay, that's fair. Okay, okay. I think Thursday if we can just review the user stories under yeah. Alpha three, yeah, that'd be great. And we can close a loop there. Yeah, I mean, I, I really would like to focus the rest of our time on all the technical stuff for Alpha 3. I mean, I called out last week, um, you know, we have quite a few PRs open that are all signed to Alpha 3. I, I really don't want us to increase and add more things to Alpha 3. There's, I feel like everything we have right now in Alpha 3, um, if you go to the all table open, he sends your screen is viewing there. Yeah, that's what the, 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 all, the all table open view up top. Yeah, and then uh, the if you go to the all table open, then it'll it'll won't show the yeah yeah. So all these ones are in progress or in PR review. I mean, there's I don't know how many that is, but that's it's quite a few. So I want to know where are we at with these. We could go one by one, or if um, Pratesh, Melind, Shiway, um, there's ones in particular you want to call out as maybe more important than others, like kind of ones that may be blocking other work or that you're kind of stuck on? May I suggest we sort it either by assignee or status, and then we walk them down to see if somebody is dependent on somebody. And again, it's for uh, to get an update. Can you sort it by assignees? And sure. sort it by status either way is fine. 
Uh, I think you, you click do on, it. Yeah, just click on the dot 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 next to assignees. Yep. It will let you sort. This is Details. the sort. No, just sort by ascending. Just sort it. So, yeah, now it's sorted by the assignees. And if anybody of them is here and they like to talk about theirs, then we can do it or want to do it over Slack. That's fine as well. But there's a couple, Pratish, that you can see there's a couple for you. You're here. So I'm just picking on you for that reason. Shiva, you have one as well. Uh, Steve, you have one as well on the uh, application as well. So, And let's also find uh, assignees for the missing ones. If we can think of the right assignee for the missing ones as to who should be the assignee for these others for which we don't have an assignee. Yeah, let's let's get the assignees to the PRs that are up there because like some of these are, uh, I mean, yeah, we have nobody assigned. So let's do that first maybe. The updates based on signing scheme update in location core go. I think this is British too. Let's just see. Yeah, this is British too. So let's go back and assign British. Is it okay if you assign this one back to you as well? So yeah. it looks like we got one review approved. Okay. So then we need what just one one more on on um another side, right? How can we change it? Yeah, the signing scheme ones, there are two PRs, one in notation, core go and go. I plan to I plan to go through them. Oh, so you should assign this to you, Amelan, or you're saying you'll review them? Is that what you're I'll saying? review them. I'll review them. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so these need it. to be uh Ritesh, if you can add the reviewer group. On the PR that that would uh, be great. That automatically assigns me. And last time I tried, I wasn't able to add it. Let me try it again. Okay. And actually, while we are on that topic, Steve is here. Uh, Steve, the code reviewers group, we created the maintainer and the reviewers. There's something missing on the reviewer group configuration. It can't be assigned yet. All right, set this all up with David. All right, David, you want to, we'll find some time later tomorrow. Yep. I cannot assign to the group. Yep. I'll check yeah, it. It's opened by me, so it doesn't make sense it to assign it back to me. I think it's someone to review that. I can just uh, add, add the uh, issue here, which this PR belongs to. No, uh, no, it's fine. We just need we just need one more one more reviewer. So, yeah. um, and then we can and that'll take work because you're 19 days ago. So it's pretty mm -hmm. pretty old. Um, do we do we have Shuei someone on your side that could take a look at this? I will assign I will assign the reviewers group. And as I said, the signing scheme there are two PRs. I plan to go through them. Okay. Um, then we go back. Um, fix the hello signing workflow has no review. Uh, it's in progress as well. This one? Yep. Or was the next one? Yeah, we, we have the reviewers. Um... Yeah, so it looks like uh, Pratesh had some feedback that was resolved, and then there was one approval. So Pratesh, maybe I think I think we're just waiting on maybe an approval from you on that one, the fixable yeah. signing workflow. I can take a look at tomorrow on 
I will take a look tomorrow on this one. Okay. Okay. Big okay. question here on this one. Uh, we have a the spec was updated to have the certificate chain minimum of two, right? Is this is this what this one does? Yep. Okay. Okay, that answer is good. Okay. The next day is Betty. Yeah, this is the one, Milan, if you can have a look at it. I think we just got rid of the file completely uh, for keeping the credentials locally. I think that's what we put in the spec, but I wanted to see if uh, this is exactly what you had in mind. Okay, this is notation 262, all right. So assign you- And she went, and she went with, there, is, there was a comment from uh, Bindan on that, and then I agreed with him. So just to clarify, we should, we should make, Sure, what, what is going to work or what's not. Okay. So, assign this to uh, Melon to review. Is that the action we're taking here? Oh, Melon has it. Okay. Yeah, already there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the next one. about this one and so we got yeah we have one approval from Shiwei so we need uh someone on the deal on the AWS side to look at this one I've asked uh, Rakesh to look at this if you can assign this he should get to this I think either tomorrow or day after Thanks, RG. Note. Yeah, RG note. How, how to spell uh, this one? Yeah. R, it's right there, RG note. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, the last one. We have a British and also email. Yeah, so all of these need to be assigned to the maintainer notation maintainers anyway, because either me or she will need to merge it in the end. Um, can, can you try that right now in the reverse add notation maintainers? Yeah, right there, there. yep. This one. Yeah, uh, I just I just added it. Notations of yeah, that one. Pritesh, can you try again? I'm not sure why you're not able to assign that on your PRs, the ones that you originally opened. Looks like we have one one approval. So yeah, we just need someone on your side. So that no pack can still not assign anyone. Like there's no uh, wheel sign next to reviewers for me. Okay. Let's try and bring okay, us you do, okay, okay, you don't have the permission to add to this. All right. Okay. Can we, um, sorry, okay. that one. Do you want to have uh, 
you try it. He has a screen open. You want him to try if he can change it. I'm just curious if we need to have those permissions be broadly distributed to assign it to a subgroup maintainer. I think the code code reviewers group probably needs this permission. At least I, I understand that generally whoever is submitting a PR, they should not be able to assign. I think the permission to assign reviewer should be both the maintainer and the reviewer group should be okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, then we can move on to the next thing on the on the agenda then. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're we're still oh the security review. Uh, someone added that. Uh, was that you, Steve? I yeah, I added that. Uh, I okay. am. So I I approved the uh, Shiva's remote credential file from spec. I see. I see comment from David and then then about clarifying it. Maybe yeah, I'll I'll let that resolve. But I think the general change looks fine just getting through smaller changes um for and before i get into my agenda item there's one more pr from rakesh that needed okay i see that she may approve a spec pr i will ping this steve if you can let me put it in chat if you can merge this, uh, that's related to expiry. I ping the link. Uh, yeah. She will so, me approved. That's a minor spec update. Uh, I feel free to have a look at that one. It's related to how expiry, uh, certificate expiry, certificate validity is treated in the absence of a timestamp. I think that's the one that I think she will more in the comment. Yeah, I will definitely take a look at it. Okay. Um, all right, let me share my screen for my agenda item. Give me a second. Okay. I will start trying. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so I went through the NCC. Uh, so there were two reports in here. Uh, the second one, I will start looking into. Uh, but from here, uh, they look pretty comprehensive. The second one also looks comprehensive. There was one um let's see where that went overall recommendation this particular one on the sign and marshall c bar versus sign and marshall c bar uh i had questions around this why we had this particular api choice of separating the sign and marshall apis so here in i believe it is the the issue yeah. that we brought up here was the difference between this and the .NET version, and the fact that if you did decide in one, <clears throat> you could still modify the a set of headers and muck up everything up. Whereas the .NET version, you have to have a separate set of parameters and uh -huh. the, the the other headers at the same time. And so we had a decision. I thought it was to to move to uh, Marshall at the same, all at the same one time here, wasn't it, Steve? The sign one, the Marshall Seabor one was basically just a, uh, a helper function anyway. Remember, I think Kim and... Um... Yeah, Kim basically, I thought, moved this one. I mean, they basically said the pattern that we had allowed you to do something silly and they would suggest we go in, go and, and seal it and return the marshaled object back yeah it seems like the sign 
you could expose just to sign and have the Marshall clubbed in it. Currently, the public API has both sign and Marshall, which uh, uh, I think the objection to it seemed like from a caller of the library, user of the library, they could use it in a less than, or they could they could use it in an improper way. Not that if they used an improper way that degrades the security, it will cause the signature verification to still fail. Correct. Uh, so but, it's fine from that aspect. It's just a library design question, and I was I was curious why that recommendation wasn't implemented. The implementation to give a wrapper function that did both of them was we did left the other two helper functions there in case in the future we needed to to do something different in this area. Your argument would be to hide the the two func the the internal functions. Yeah, the only reason I could see is you call sign, and I don't know what's the time stamping. I'm assuming the time stamping is just the standard TSS, public TSS, uh, not cozy encoded yep. TSS response or such. So the way I, I like one rationale would be you do sign, then the unprotected headers get added on to the sign one message or whatever is the response of this. And then you call March and Seabor at the end. That that was one reason I could see this used in a regular that, oh, that valid was, use case. Yeah, that was the original intent. The the problem that they found was you could modify more than just right. so, the other headers. Yeah, I guess the other way to do that is you still retain the underlying representation, which I think is the sign one message or the signature, whichever one, and you provide a method which allows you to add unprotected headers. And that that will again return you the Marshall response. That's fine. It's, it's not a security yeah. uh, issue as such, uh, just API design. Yeah. The Kim so went through this. Yeah, that's okay. fine. I would, I would still think about it. You, you can have a method that allows you to add unprotected headers. Correct. The, you know, if it's in case of .NET, I think we have function overloading. So we basically have one without protected headers, another with, I think with Go, you'd end up having to pass them both in at the same time, regardless. All right. Um, that. Yeah, that was the only one. Uh, I think all of the other recommendations were implemented. Uh, as I said, I will, I think by Thursday, I should have the second report done. I, yeah, I skimmed through it. Yeah, and like at this point, I don't see any, it's, it's basically due diligence need to go through the second report and then we should be good. So Malin, be aware that there were also separate bugs created by Tolga with the findings from the NSA, but there won't be um, a written report, right? They were tracked in issues? Yeah, they were tracked as issues. Okay. We, we addressed those two, just be aware that there was this hidden third set. Were those, like what should I look for if I want to see those? Open uh, by to, open, like yeah. yeah, open by Tolga. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks for thanks for that info. All those are basically fronted as we did a code review, we found this sort of thing. Okay. Okay. All right. And uh, let's see, we have 20 minutes left. All right, if I can get, it was get your feedback on the, what was that, 178. Yeah, it was 178. That would be, yeah. And let me see if there are any other smaller PRs that we can get through. Uh, was there anything else on the agenda? I'm going back to the agenda.
There was one just, um, I think you had around creating a user story for um, the cozy work. I, I think that's, I mean, that's, it's not really, it's more of a PM kind of question, but um, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Uh, give me a minute. I'm going through open PRs. If there are any smaller ones that we can address. I think I had a general one around a notary project, open PRs. There are some older ones that I believe uh, just bringing this up. I think by next meeting or next Monday, if everybody can review their open PRs, there are some quite old ones from when we were doing requirements clarification. Some of those could be closed. And looking at the other repositories now. Uh, basic signature verification. Okay, I'll ping this one on the chat. Um, I approved this. Uh, Shiva has been looking at this PR. Shiva, uh, Rakesh addressed your comments. This is a large chunk of code for the overall verification. Uh, yes, I'm still reviewing it. Uh, okay. Uh, because it's a large PR. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, and yes, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, I also see that implement custom signature verification level, it got two approvals. I will go through this tonight. I guess I'll skim through, it's got two approvals and I'll squash and merge. Okay, looking at notation call go on so. All right, we just have three PRs there. One is I will mean, look at it and there's the fix hash function name. All right. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, the spec PR, once, uh, once Roy reviews it, uh, I'll track that. I'll ping Steve once I see a approval from Roy or review from Roy once it is closed. Okay, I will try and get it tomorrow. I kind of cleared off some space in my calendar anyway. Cool. Okay. Well, yeah, we have. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, oh, so yeah, six, eight, eight, eight PRs, mm -hmm. eight PRs up uh, for alpha three. Um, so yeah, let's let's just keep keep on with those. I do think um, side side thing that that as a another PM note to to work out is the CLI command specification issue that's assigned alpha three that's assigned to Steve. Um, I think we need to change the format up on that uh, to what we talked about with the user story stuff. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any action further on Steve on, on that one. Yeah, I thought I, I thought my part was done and Feynman was going to pick up because I think that I left the baseline that was in there. The only thing that was questioned or the only thing that came up was we wanted to establish kind of a template for we want to do all, all the other commands. And then there was a switch to the Cobra library that kind of dictated what the, the template would look like. So from there, I thought a combination of thing and then we really hit up with that. So I think my point wraps up. 
Is there something more you need from me on it? Or? Can hear you. Let me see. Is it a yes? Yeah, we have. We have a bunch of we have a bunch of issues for up, updating various specific notation commands um, for RC one, and we have obviously user stories around the notation <laughs> sign verify other other elements. So I think we just need to Samir just decide what we want to do with that one, or just or just close it um, and then migrate other other user stories over. Yeah, I think we made the decision on relooking at everything after Alpha 3 is after we can build and sign with the Alpha 3 pre release and then take a pass at what the experience looks like before we say what's needed in RC1. Yeah, so do, so do we, I mean, for this specific one number, uh, what is it, uh, roadmap issue 36, uh, do you want to just go ahead and close it for now? Um, it's assigned. It's assigned to Alpha three, and it's just it says there should be a specification to help implementers understand the architecture of the CLI engine for continuing to maintain and extend it. Which there's documentation there around it. Um, I'm looking. Sorry. Uh, Can you ping the link? Yeah. I just posted it. Yeah, I think uh, the underlying PR under which we are saying this is taken care of is 171. Uh, am I thinking right? The 171 in notation is the underlying PR under which we are saying we have taken a stab at this. But yeah. 171 is basically what we have today. And yeah. But that's not what we want tomorrow, right? That's tomorrow, maybe a different word. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty big, right? So it's like, that's what I'm saying. We need to decide what we're doing with it. Either, you know, take any other user story that we have and and modify it or, um, you know, just, yeah, change the title. It's, it's, I'm sorry, is this the CLI commands you're still talking about? Yeah, CLI command specification, yeah. So what we did with this is we had this one blanket one, and what we said was that's the baseline, that's done. And then because the baseline reflects what's currently in the notation CLI. And then what we said is for each one that we wanted to change, we created a separate user story, a you know, separate issue, whether it's a user story or not. So that's why you saw those other user stories in there is they broke out each individual one so that Feynman might take one of them, he might take another, Samir might take another, and let us more granularly edit one at a time instead of having like this monstrous PR with every CLI command. So the dependency was baseline's done. Then there was another one that said something around what is the template going to look like? So that one somebody needs to take ownership of and says based on the, on the Cobra um, library, what would each command look like? And it, you know everything from default parameters and other stuff to hey, what is the case formatting? You know, where, where does a colon go for each property name? This way we can crank through it. And as we approve the CLI for each one, then when engineering goes and actually writes the code to it, there's not a lot of iteration because we've already done everything, including the little doc string lock. So that was yep. where that left off. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, us move into the specific user story of a subset of notation, right? Um, is where we're going. I think we all we're all agreed on that. So, yeah, um, yeah. I think it's a tracking thing. You can yeah. you can close right. this. You can create a master user story if yeah. you want, uh, but we definitely want to track it uh, as a top level item where the sub items are each of the commands. So either way is fine. Either close this, uh, okay, and create yeah, a new we'll one, or rename this. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 
Yeah. Um, let's so, uh, so Sajri brought up an interesting uh, question. I want to just throw it out there. So talking about the VS code extension for trust policy editing and that consideration. Yeah, I put in my feedback. That, yeah, that definitely worth looking into. I like, like I said in the comment, I, I think once people get hands on with the alpha three version, which has trust policy plus store, that would probably bring up other ideas as well, how to simplify this. And we are also talking about how through CLI command itself, we want to do that. So yeah, I think that would be a great point to consider all the options. Okay. Do we feel like um, with what we have up here, uh, that's that's like through alpha three, uh, like if we were to, would we have enough with directory store structures, trust, trust store, trust policy to be able to build something on top of that? In, in terms like of if the somebody were, experience... If somebody were to take a dependency theoretically, or is there like other chunks that I'm that I'm missing? Maybe that you feel like, oh well, gosh, we really have to have this or that for you know after after alpha three, on top of trust TSA, store. Well. TSA integration is broken. I think other than that, all of the overall features are there. Revocation is not there. Yeah, I think TSA sure. and revocation are two kind of production important features. But that's the yeah, again that that's where it stands at alpha three. Revocation. What was the other one you said? I'm sorry. Uh, time stamping. A oh, time stamping. Okay. I I do want to mention. Uh, last week we talked about Shiva me updating the TSA issue with what was required. We talked about code coverage, etc. I haven't gotten to that. I'll still be creating those issues when I get time. I think we've gone through everything and then some. Does anybody else have anything else or we can give seven minutes back? I could use seven minutes back. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to uh, add additional comments uh, to the CI command stack. Um, I think uh, Steve has also created some uh, specific issues for uh, you know the update notation, sign, verify, and the login command. Uh, with back, yeah. And uh, right now, uh, E and I are working with these CL commands back. And uh, for the first step, we are uh, investigating and uh, test and the testing uh, the current user experience of sign and verify based on the build, based on the binary of from the uh, you know the main branch, yeah. And uh, we met a, a couple of problems uh, when trying this command. The basic uh, sign and verify command. So I think this might be the current uh, issue that block us. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, we will uh, we will finalize the design of the sign verify and logging command based on the current user stories this week. Yeah. So Sally, if you have any uh, suggestions or if you want to join us to design the CI command stack, uh, you can reach out to E, me, and uh, David. Yeah. There yeah. are also some yeah, issues the, yeah, about, about yeah, this. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And then you can see from the notes repair board, you will find some uh, CI command, uh, CI command spec issues that created by uh, Steve and uh, they have been assigned to uh, E and uh, me right now, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what we were just talking about is updating the commands. The, the thing that I, the thing that I was kind of getting worried about with all the churn going in, you know, it's great to see progress um, and why we need to do code coverage is I'm not sure what the current stability of the notation CLI is that many. So like there, David, we had that one issue around the login, the registry login being closed. I don't know if it's working. I haven't had a chance to test it myself. So I know the alpha build was working great. And, you know, the actual keyboard provider and everything, it would just be good to, like, I don't know what the current build status is, so I don't know if it's broken because the CLI commands out of sync or the plugin stuff or the, sorry, the um, policy management stuff. 
but it'd be great to kind of just get a stability over alpha, what the last alpha would be supposed to what we're currently have. Yeah, I think we touched upon this last time. Some of me, like major PRs are, I think more so in the verification. I wouldn't expect end-to-end -end things to working. Uh, I think post alpha three, like we've got good start on unit test. I think integration tests would be the next item post alpha three so that we have a sense of what CLI workflows are working or not at a given moment. Yeah, so I, I think we kind of kind of said that just kind of basic sign sign verify things um, we should have working. And I know you uh, filed the three bugs, which all have PRs up. So hopefully, once those are merged, um, the the basic sign verify with the the plugins can can function. Um, I mean, I think that's kind of what we said um, as a baseline. But yeah, other after you get out of the sign verify workflow, then yeah, you're right. It's um, a, little, a little more up in the air. I know the login one was pretty recent, so I'm actually expecting that to still work per Steve's point. Um, I haven't personally tested it, but um, but I think we should test that because it's it theoretically shouldn't there should be nothing wrong with it, and it ties back to Shiwei's current PR that's up there in the spec as well. So um, yeah. And that's part of it. Let's, so so yeah, I mean that ties into my suggestion on the discussion that we had a while back, right? Where it sounds like Obviously, we're moving forward with the weekly build to help with integration testing, um, and then also the suggestion it seems like uh, that I made around having a kind of denotion of which subcommands of notation we want to have in, let's say, pre-release versus kind of more supported as we continue to develop through all the phases. Uh, that hasn't been done, but that would significantly help, uh, of course, as well for people to, you know, have an expectation of what's what should be working and perhaps what may, may not. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, sir. Close out. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Bye. Bye. Try and Bye. post something tomorrow for you, Melinda. See if we can close it down.